An early concept in the study of infant attachment was the idea of a critical period. That's to say, a period of time beyond which it would be impossible for an infant to form an attachment. Initial support for this thinking came from animal studies of attachment, such as Lorenz's 1935 research on imprinting in geese. Early work in the study of attachment was heavily biased towards animal research, but the theories were supported by some case studies of maternal privation, such as Curtis's 1977 case study of Jeannie, the feral child, who was locked up by her father from sometime around 14 to 20 months until she was rescued at the age of 13. Jeannie's inability to build typical relationships or develop language which was the main interest of Curtis's study, has been used as support for the concept of a critical period that Jeannie didn't reach. However, it's possible that Jeannie's tragic story may be more complicated than a simple cause and effect conclusion would allow. Her mother forbade researchers to continue studying her in 1978, and whilst it's believed that Jeannie is still alive today, in her 60s, nothing is known of her subsequent development. By the way, if you're interested to learn more about this harrowing case, check out Mockingbird Don't Sing, which is an indie film telling Jeannie's story from the point of view of Dr Curtis. Bobby's own research on 44 juvenile delinquents was also used to further the idea of a critical period of attachment, as Bowlby's subjects had all been exposed to family discord or an impersonal institutional care system prohibiting them from forming that key first attachment within the supposed critical period. But other research draws such conclusions into doubt, and where Bowlby claims even good mothering is almost useless if delayed until after the age of two and a half years, others have a rosier outlook. Tizard studied development of a group of children who had lived the first years of life in care with a constantly changing staff looking after them. Some of the children didn't leave the care system and enter an adoptive family until the age of seven, Despite this, at the age of 8 and 16, Tizard found that in the majority of cases, relationships in the adoptive family were good, and the children soon learned to demonstrate affection, which developed into close attachments. Further research on a group of Romanian orphans in 1995 by Chisholm, Carter, Amys and Morrison also found no indication that early life experience in a deprived institution would result in a later inability to form attachments with adoptive parents. That said, both Tizard and Chisholm do note that children in their studies tended to be over-friendly with strangers, and Chisholm also observed that the Romanian orphans were not easily comforted when distressed. Combining the results and conclusions of the studies we've discussed in this video, it seems that whilst there might not be such a critical period as Bowlby described, Children who do not develop an attachment with a primary caregiver in early life may demonstrate some social, developmental and emotional consequences of this deprivation as they grow up. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it interesting and helpful, please give it a thumbs up to let other people know that it's a good video to watch on this topic. And if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you won't miss out on any of our upcoming videos. And for more on the fascinating world of psychology, head to psychologyunlocked.com.